أبدا لا لن نحيد أبدا لا لن نحيد أبدا لا لن نحيد عن خطى الإيمان دربنا درب قويم دربنا درب قويم بالهدى القرآني أبدا لا لن نحيد أبدا لا لن نحيد أبدا لا لن نحيد عن خطى الإيمان أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الدنيا سجن المؤمن وجنة الكافر صدق الله وصدق رسول ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين أما بعد There is one story that's mentioned about a prince who one day he wandered into the forest. And while there in the forest, he noted something strange. That there were these holes that were on the trees. And around every single hole, there was a circle. It seemed as though there was someone who drew circles who drew bullseyes and actually had such precision that every single shot that he sent went directly at the center of every single ring. And when it is this prince, you will look around. Every single tree that he will see, he will see the very same marks. So therefore, he set out on a mission to find this expert archer to find this person with such exquisite skill, with such abilities and such talents, until finally he found a man. He found him with his bow and he found him with his arrow. And he couldn't have helped himself except him to ask, how did you acquire such a skill? How did you acquire such an ability that you are able, that every single time that you shoot, that your mark is at the center of every single circle on those trees. The archer, he said to him, really and truly, the matter is extremely easy. What I do is really and truly, I shoot first, and afterwards I go and draw the circle. He says, the first thing that I do is I shoot first. I take out my arrow, and then I go and draw my circle. So therefore, it seems as though towards somebody coming afterwards, it's an expert. Rather, it's a folly. It's a person without any expertise and without any skill. It's a person who has no talent at all. Rather, it's a person who is aimless, has no vision. It's a person who is really and truly low. And when it is, we look at society today and we look at people. Do people really possess skills? Do they really possess abilities? Do they really have ambitions and dreams? Do they really have goals in their lives that they are trying to accomplish and trying to achieve? Or are we people like this archer, aimless, just doing a little thing here and a little thing there, but really and truly we have no objectives in our lives, we have nothing in our lives. Really and truly are we hollow people who get up every single day and we just meander from our beds, we go to our job and return to do it every single day. Is this the lives that we are living? Lives that are meaningless, lives that are hollow. Lives without any vision, ambition, goal and aim, without anything to go for. In the Holy Quran, in Surah Muhammad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says to humanity, he says to you and I, إِنَّمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا لَعِبٌ وَلَهُ That, O oh humanity, certainly the surface of this earth is nothing but لَعِبٌ وَلَهُ is nothing except a play and an amusement. Look at majority of the things that are on the face of the earth. Many of it, they are not used in any productive manner. They are not used for any great accomplishment. They are not used for anything holistic and great. 
Look at the resource of people that exist on the face of the earth. That every single year, people, they will advocate and they will make quite a lot of noise. That so many trees are being cut down every single day. Just for paper to be manufactured. Examine with an eye of closeness and see where majority of the paper of the world is being spent. Majority of it, they are not in books. They are not for any constructive purposes. Rather, majority of the people on the face of the earth is for sheer entertainment. Look at the billions of magazines that are produced from every single line, every single time. Just for a person to do what read and toss in the bin. Every single day. Millions of copies of papers just to reach in the bin at evening. Look at how much paper is used for tickets, for all of these different things. Resources of the world not being used for constructive purposes. Rather, they are, they are used for things that are vain, futile, and useless. Where is our aim and ambition? Where are we looking at? Where is our scope and gaze as a people? Allah tells us in the Holy Quran, Innama al hayatu dunya la'ibu wa lahu. When it is we look at this earth that we have, we'll see majority of the activities, they are filled with only amusement and play. Subhanallah, today we have advanced to such a level that we glorify and we put people on such pedestals whose life is just a play and we call them great. That to excel and to be with regards to this somebody who is good at a sport, to entertain us, we are willing to give them our hard and well just to entertain. We have reached to that levels and to people who are so low. Where is our vision? Where is our scope? Where do we aim and where do we look at as individuals? Allah is calling our hearts to Him. إِنَّمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا لَعِبُ وَاللَّهُ O humanity, open your eyes and wake up a little bit. Shake and shrug yourselves from the slumber that you and I are in and see the world for what the world is. And then Allah continues to mention, وَإِن تُؤْمِنُوا وَتَتَّقُوا O humanity, if you were to believe and fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you were to do the right thing. You are to be such an individual who are to always do that which is correct and good. And let us take an example. Going back to when the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he became the Nabi and he became the Prophet. Abu Sufyan had once gone towards the different lands for trade. And Hercules, he had gotten information that in Mecca, there is a man who is claiming to be a Nabi and claiming to be a prophet. So therefore he made an announcement that is there anybody from Mecca in our lands that we can verify that there is a man claiming to be a Nabi in Mecca. Lo and behold, who is there? Abu Sufyan is there. At that point in time, he was not a Muslim. Hercules has dialogue with him. Imam Bukhari brings a long tradition. The whole entire dialogue is there. And he asks him one question. And Abu Sufyan, and the question he asks him is that, do you know that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what about the wars between you and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the trustworthiness of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Abu Sufyan at this point in time, the thought flashed across his mind that this is a prime opportunity whereby if I say a word to this man, he is going to believe me and he is going to discredit every single thing about this man Muhammad. And at that point in time, Abu Sufyan is enemy of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Sufyan, he says though, he says, but if I lie, and if I were to say anything that's false at this point in time, my own colleagues and companions will dislike me. And therefore, I cannot even lie. Or let me explain. 
the environment that existed in the time of the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam was such an environment of purity that if you were to lie, the environment was so pure, pristine, that your lie would have manifested itself. Everybody would have known that you would have been a liar. Come to this so-called advanced world, lying is such a thing that's praiseworthy now. We can't even differentiate between hak and batil. And we are talking about enemies of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Failing to lie on account of the purity of the environment. Because had he done that, his own companions would have ratted him out and says, Nah, you're a liar. We are talking about such environments. Such time and such people that existed at that point in time. Allah is telling you and I, وَإِن تُؤْمِنُوا وَتَتَّكُوا O humanity, if you and I were to believe in Allah and were to fear Him, in other words, we were to do the right thing. Understand, يُؤْتِكُمْ أُجُورَكُمْ Allah says that I will give you all the rewards for those good that you do. All the rewards for the good that you do. You ask any individual on the face of the earth who is a Muslim, be he rich or poor, be he affluent or non-affluent, be he black or white, whatever social standing this individual may possess, you ask him, what's your goal that do you want to get towards Jannat and Paradise? For sure he's going to say, yeah, I want to go to Jannat and Paradise. I want to go to the land of eternal bliss. I want to go to the land where there is absolutely no worries at all, no hardship. Where there is only ease and enjoyment and pleasure, of course I want to go there. And for every single thing when it is we look at this world, everybody has a plan. Everybody has a plan. They have a way that they are putting things in line in order to achieve the goals that they have. You and I, we share a common goal of Jannah. What's our plan? Have we thought about our plan in achieving that? That looking at my state right now, me as an individual, what are the things that are harboring? What are the things that are pulling me back? What are the things that are debarring me from getting to Jannat and Paradise? And for everybody, those things may be different. For one individual, it may be his salat. For another, it may be his zakat. For another, it may be his attitude. For another individual, he may have an anger problem. Every individual is different with regards to that. Therefore, we have problems. What's our plan to eradicate those problems and get towards our ultimate destination and goal? What plans have we set for ourselves? What are we doing to eradicate those things and get to that ultimate, to get to Jannat and Paradise? So firstly, we need and we have an aim. And after getting that aim, we need to recognize as well, we must have a plan. How are we going to get it? And there is absolutely no pathway towards an objective that's easy and that is smooth and sailing. Take an example from the life of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He has a dream that he is going to Makkah to Al-Mukarramah. This is after they were in Medina to Al-Munawwara kicked out of Makkah. He had a dream that we are going towards Makkah and we are going to perform Umrah. And the dreams of prophets, they are all truthful. So therefore the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is excited. So Haba radiallahu ta'ala and they are also excited. Everybody comes out. They are going towards Makkah to Al-Mukarramah. On their way to Makkah, the Quraysh, they hold them. Where are you all going? You all are not allowed to come into Makkah to Al-Mukarramah. You all can't come inside Makkah at all. At that point in time, they are stopped. They can't enter into Makkah. Rather, treaty is made between them. That forget this year, you all will come back next year and only stay for three days and then you all will have to leave Makkah. Agreements were made. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam realized, okay, at this point in time I'm blocked from Makkah to al-Mukarramah. 
But is Islam only to reach to Makkah? No. Islam is to reach to the whole world. Where is the direction of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He picks up another way. What's the way he picks up now? Let me start sending letters towards all the surrounding kings that are there. Letters are sent to Bahrain. Letters are sent to Egypt. Letters are sent to all the neighboring territories. Try and getting these people to Islam. Come next year, we are going to go back to Mecca to al when we are actually allowed to go back. Even the prophets, they were blocked in their missions at different points in time. But that doesn't mean that you will give up your striving. That doesn't mean that you will give up your effort. For no pathway towards the ultimate pathways, they are smooth. And we can understand it with an even better example. Look at Nuh alayhi salam. Nuh alayhi salam is on the face of the earth. For 950 years, the Quran tells us. He is on the face of the earth. Quran mentions... Layla wa nahara, night and day he is calling his people. What's his aim? To get everybody to accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He calls them secretly and he calls them in public. Nuh alayhi salam exerts himself with all exertion, trying to get the people to accept Islam. At 950 years, about 70 individuals accept Islam. As human beings and as people, we are going to be blocked. Those pathways are not always going to be smooth and sailing. But Allah wants to see us actually try. Put our plans that we have made into effect. And for certainly, there is one poet who says that any pathway that's extremely easy, the possibility is that leads to nowhere. Any pathway that's extremely easy, the possibility is that that pathway leads towards nowhere. So the struggles that we go through, maybe it's our anger that we need to curb. It's not going to be a walk in the path and tomorrow we are all good. Maybe it with regards to alcohol. Maybe it with regards towards our salat. Maybe it with regards to this and that. We are not going to get up tomorrow morning and be all perfect. But we can't stop. The plans that we have made, the pathway that we have set for ourselves, when the obstacles, they come, we need to execute that plan. Until we don't execute that plan, we are only dreamers, and dreamers get nothing done. Until then, we are only going to be dreamers. And on the face of the earth today, if we were to ask everybody inside here, is the Muslim Ummah suffering? For certainly everybody will say yes. And if it is you were to ask everybody, why do you think the Muslim Ummah is suffering? He will say, because they are not upon Salat. That one will say, because they are disunited. This one will say, because the ulama are like this. Because like this. And we can go on and on and on with the excuses. The excuses are there. What's the solution? Then? What are we bringing to the table as solutions towards all of these problems that are there? As individuals, we need to have personal plans for our own self. We need to have ambitions and goals for ourselves. And not only let it remain as an ambition and a goal. That I want to come for Fajr tomorrow. That I want to do this and I want to do that. It shouldn't be that. We need to execute as individuals. We need to do. We need to man up. We need to walk the walk and stop talking the talk. We need to actually do what we have to do as individuals. For Jannah is our goal. One person he says, The devil has absolutely no problems with your intention. As long as your intention is for tomorrow. The devil has no problems with your intentions. As long as your intention is for tomorrow. Because come tomorrow, it's going to be for the other day. And the devil is happy with that. You ain't changing at all. You are the exact same way all the time. The devil is extremely happy. And I'll close with one tradition of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. From Jabir radiallahu ta'ala. Jabir radiallahu ta'ala, he says that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna akhwafa ma atakhawafu ala ummati. Certainly. The thing that I fear most for my ummah 
Al-hawa wa tulul amal. There are two things. Hawa, beast desires, just running along with folly, doing nothing, absolutely just following desires alone, aimlessness. I hate that. The Rasul says, this is what I don't want for my ummah. This is what I fear for my ummah. Inna akhwafa ma atakhawafu ala al-ummah. Al-hawa, I fear this hawa. And I also fear tulul amal. And what's tulul amal? Hope for life in the distant future. I hate when the ummah, they think that they will live to see 100. Or you think that he will live to see 50. Or a man thinks that he will live to see tomorrow. Because as long as that has, that has filled the heart, then you are never going to change. Because in your mind, you always have time. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, فَأَمَّا hawa, As for hawa and the following of the base desires, فَيَسُدُّ عَنِ الْحَقِّ That's going to prevent and stop you from doing the correct thing. That's going to stop you from doing the right thing. Haven't we seen people do wrong and justify the wrongs that they have done? This is when Hawa and their base desires have overtaken them. The Rasul said it so long ago that when the Hawa and the desires happen, we are going to even justify the wrongs that we do. As for hope of seeing the distant future, you are only going to be thinking, what am I going to achieve tomorrow? What am I going to achieve five days from now? And what's going to happen to you? You are going to forget that you will have to meet Allah. Lo and behold, Malikul Mawk will give you the knock and then he will snatch the soul and run away. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, I fear this for my ummah. فَإِنَّ هَذِهِ الدُّنْيَا مُرْتَحِلَةٌ ذَاهِبَةٌ For certainly, the life of this world is like a journey that's going away from us. In other words, we are traveling and leaving it behind. And the akhirah, the hereafter, murtahilatun qadimatun, it's the destination we are going to. And then the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, for these two abodes, for the people of this world and the people of Jannah, they are people that belong to both categories of people. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then said to you and I, O oh humanity, please, I beg, choose or do not choose rather to be of the people of this world. I want you all to be people of the hereafter. Stretch your scope and your gaze to the hereafter. And then the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said at the end of the tradition, and this is the crux and this is the message for you and I today, that right now, you and I are in that, that sphere of our lives that is called Darul Amal. We are right now in the time that we can set goals for ourselves. We can have ambitions and we can execute. Right now we are in the world of Amal, the time that we can do. And as of right now, wala hisab, nobody is taking our reckoning now. However, come tomorrow, when we die and stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are going to be in a realm. Wala amal. There is going to be no deed that we can do then. Rather, that's going to be day of hisab and that's going to be the day of reckoning before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, as human beings and as people, we need to have goals in our lives. We need to have an action plan and we need to execute those action plans. For if we don't, then we are going to be like that archer who is only shooting arrows and thereafter drawing a circle, aimless, without any scope and vision, without any real skill and ambition. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq that we be of people of Jannah, that we be people who recognizes the lowliness of this world and we make amendments in our lives to gain the akhirah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those goals that we have set in our hearts, those goals that are there resting for a while, may Allah grant us the tawfiq to execute. May Allah grant us the tawfiq to make some change in our lives. For just like when parents, they receive the report of their children, normally they will tell them, hey, you need to do better, you need to do better. That's just a big goal. What's doing better? We need to have realistic goals. 
that right now you are 50, set a goal for yourself, next term is 60. Set true, real goals. And how am I going to get 60? I'm going to do this and that, real plans. Not only that, execute those plans that we have set as well. Let they not just be intentions and dreams. Let they manifest themselves and be realities. We are not in control of the end result, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see us try. And when Alimi gives one beautiful example, Allah, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, in one tradition, that if it is we walk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala runs towards us. We need to make the first attempt. Just like a parent who is looking at their little toddler, now making one or two steps, there will be a few feet from them. But the second they see them falling, what happens? They run towards them to pick them up. May Allah grant us tawfiq and may Allah pick us up as well. If we ever with regards to our executions fail, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never make us fail. Wa akhir da'wan and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Abadan lala al-nahid, abadan lala al-nahid, abadan lala al-nahid an khuta al-imani. Darbuna darbun qawim, darbuna darbun qawim bil huda al-Qur'ani. Abadan lala al-nahid, abadan lala al-nahid, abadan lala al-nahid. عن خطى الإيمان دربنا درب قويم دربنا درب قويم بالهدى القرآن سائر في طريق الحق يا جند الله سائر